Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's devotional. Our thought today is going to build on what we discussed yesterday in this article uh, entitled Top Five Heresies Among American Evangelicals. And again, this is from ChristianityToday.com, which, uh, again, I think has a it's more so a, a Catholic type of, of website. But I think a lot of what they are discussing is kind of interesting here. So earlier we talked about some of the uh, the application kind of that that was gained from that Gallup poll regarding how people view the Bible, whether it's the literal word of God or it's inspired by God, but not to be taken literally. And then the third one was that it's just a book of fables and so forth. Um, and we, we noted that the, the specific application uh, that I think that we, we attributed to what we call fast food religion. This view makes it easy for individuals to accept biblical teaching that they resonate with while simultaneously rejecting any biblical teaching that is out of step with their own personal views or broader cultural values. It's just pick and choose religion, which boils down to either the Bible is the word of God or it's not. But as I said, we're gonna cover some of these uh, five of the most common mistaken beliefs held by evangelicals in this year's survey. And we're not gonna cover all five today. We're actually only gonna cover two, uh, the first two. And I wanna first notice uh, what this first one is. It says, Jesus isn't the only way to God. This is the first uh, heretical belief or mistaken beliefs that some evangelicals hold. More than half, 56% of evangelical respondents affirmed that God accepts the worship of all religions, including Christianity, Judaism, and Islam, up from 42% in 2020. And while the question doesn't include all religions, it indicates a bent towards universalism, believing that there are ways to bypass Jesus in our approach to and acceptance by God. This contradicts orthodox theology found in the scriptures, in which Jesus affirms that I am the way, the truth, and life. No one comes to the Father except through me, John 14, 6. And they're absolutely correct. Uh, John 14, 6, Jesus, he makes it clear that the only way to get to get to the Father is through, through Jesus. But it, it's interesting here that Judaism and Islam are both mentioned, even though uh, all all religions, other religions like Buddhism and stuff may not have been on that particular survey. Certainly the belief is carried through regarding universalism is that no matter what name he goes by, everybody worships the same God. So whether they call him Buddha or whether they call him Yahweh, or, uh, Yahweh for Judaism, or they call him um, Allah in Islam, it's all the same God, so it doesn't really matter. And as uh, the article rightly points out, John 14 verse six obviously is one uh, of those passages that is important to understand, is not a part of, uh, or, or doesn't suggest that it's okay to worship those uh, in other ways other than through Jesus. But for that matter, even going back to the Old Testament, in Exodus chapter 20 and in verse 3, part of the Ten Commandments, you shall have no other gods before me. Well, when you start describing Jehovah in a way that is not consistent with the characteristics of Jehovah as he describes himself in the Bible, you're no longer describing Jehovah. You're describing a false god, a different god. Allah is not Jehovah. They are not the same thing. Buddha is, is not Jehovah. They're not the same thing. And in addition to the qualities or the characteristics of the God at question, Buddha, Allah, and then certainly the one true God, Jehovah, uh, also you have to include what he teaches or what he has conveyed regarding his will for us. Those have to align as well. And Islam, what Allah commands his people to do and to, to think and believe is not the same as what Jehovah commands his creation to do or to, to how to behave. Uh, and the same thing can be said of Buddha and any other type of, of false, false religion. And the fact of the matter is that when you compare these things together, sure, there are some, I guess you could say, there, there may be some uh, moral kernels or uh, good advice in some of those other religions that may, you know, carry over from 
basic morality that was actually given by God in the law he gave to Adam and Eve, and then again through, uh, certainly as it came through Noah, uh, on through, down through the ages, through Abraham, and then of course the old law through Moses. But dis despite all of that, Buddha, uh, Allah, whatever, they're not the originator of those, of those teachings. Whatever that is good in those have come from God, from Jehovah. Uh, and it's important to establish that fact. And the fact that only through Jesus do we have the opportunity for salvation. Of course, uh, as uh, uh, the Peter and John, as they state in Acts chapter 4, as they are standing before the, uh, the Sanhedrin, uh, they say, whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you more than God, you judge. We cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. And then in chapter 5, after they're once again called before the Sanhedrin, the, this is all the apostles this time, and as they're standing uh, before the, the Sanhedrin, um, Peter says, We ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you murdered by hanging on a tree. Uh, and then he goes on to say, uh, in verse 32, we are his witnesses to these things, and so also is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. And of course, Gamaliel then uh, gives his, uh, gives his uh, uh, defense, or I say defense, his wisdom regarding fighting against God. And, but it goes to show that there is no other name given among men by which we must be saved. And it, it is only through the name of Jesus. And it's important that we acknowledge that. Now, uh, that obviously people who don't want to acknowledge it, they're not going to anyway. So, you know, that, 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 that's not uh, the, uh, uh, the issue here. But this is evangelicals. These are people who claim to be Christian who think that, well, it doesn't really matter what religion you are, what God you worship, uh, how you go about it. It's all the same thing and it's not. And then the second one, is that Jesus was created by God. This is the second of the five um, heresies or, or false beliefs among American evangelicals. A surprising 73% agreed with the statement that Jesus is the first and greatest being created by God. Now, this is a form of Arianism, a popular heresy that arose in the early 4th century. In fact, if you'll remember, those of you who were in our, our adult class when we were studying uh, church history and both from the Bible and then moving into secular history, particularly as it pertained to the Catholic Church and so forth, you'll remember we talked a little bit about Arianism and those who were behind it and how that this kind of brought about the first, the, the, the councils in the 300s AD, namely the Council of Nicaea being the primary one, and then there were several others after that. Those believing it caused such a stir that it led to the gathering of the very first ecumenical council of church leaders. They discussed and denounced these and other unorthodox beliefs as heretical for being contrary to scripture. Out of the Council of Nicaea came the Nicene, or the Nicene Creed, which states in part that Jesus was not made, but eternally begotten, and one in being with the Father, as found in passages including John 3.16 and John 14.9. And, and certainly, as we believe John, certainly John 3, 16, John 14, 9. But in addition to those, what does John chapter 1 say? In John chapter 1, in verse 1, John says, In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Uh, the light shines in the darkness, and then we find in verse... Uh, verse 9, that was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. He was in the world. The world was made through him. The world did not know him. He came to his own and his own did not receive him. Um, and verse 14, the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the father, full of grace and truth. Now, John unequivocally says that Obviously, verse 14, the word became flesh and dwelt among us, being Jesus. Therefore, Jesus was in the beginning. In fact, even Jesus says to those who were questioning him before Abraham was, I am. Jesus directly links himself 
to the I that exists exist statement of Jehovah back when Moses asked God through the burning bush, who, what, who should I say has sent me? And God says, I am that I am. Literally, I who exist exist, which means that I am independent of anyone. I am not dependent on anyone for my existence. I'm not dependent on anything for my existence. I exist solely by my own power, by my own authority. And Jesus links himself with that in saying, before Abraham was, I am. And John carries that out. Jesus was with God. Jesus was God and is God. And he was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Jesus. And so the idea that Jesus, uh, even though the way that they, that they word this is that he was a... Um, how do they word this? That he was the first and greatest being created by God. How can God, if God is made up of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, then that means that that Jesus can't be God if he was a created being. It doesn't really make any sense. Either you've got the three as one, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, all being God, the divine nature, what we call the Godhead, or... Jesus is a created being. And in fact, there's actually another quote unquote heresy uh, regarding the Holy Spirit here uh, later on. But these first two, I think, are very interesting because we would absolutely agree with the fact that these two teachings, that Jesus was created by God and that the only way, or, or uh, Jesus isn't the only way to God, are absolutely not according to Scripture. Uh, the fact is that Jesus is the only way to God and that Jesus is and ha always has been God. That Jesus, the Father, and the Holy Spirit have always been. None of them have been, quote-unquote, created. They have always been. Uh, so I, I just think that's interesting that you've got 56% think. And again, these are of evangelicals who were, uh, who were part of this questionnaire, evangelical respondents. Again, how, how many of these individuals actually represent the thought process or beliefs of all quote-unquote evangelicals or, or people who consider themselves Christians? I don't know. But that's a big number even still. Over half think that any religion can get you to God. And for that matter, almost three in four people who call themselves Christians think that Jesus was a created being. That's that's crazy. I just it's it's weird to think that people who would consider themselves Christians, believers in the New Testament, would think that Jesus was a created being. And it just suggests it goes to show, first of all, lack of distinctive teaching, for one. That is an issue that permeates religious society. Now, most people are used to kind of happy, fluffy, make you feel good type of sermons coming from televangelists and not distinctive teaching. And this, I mean, you would hardly call Jesus being part of the divine nature, being God himself, necessarily a distinctive teaching. You would think that that would be assumed, but apparently not. There's people who think that that's not the case, three and four. So we'll talk about some of these others uh, for Monday and Tuesday next week. Uh, but in the meantime, I just thought this was really interesting uh, and obviously something we need to be aware of. In fact, this is why we're going through this, this entire article uh, is so that we can be aware when we talk to other people, particularly individuals who may be religious or spiritually minded, uh, who may consider themselves Christians and what we might encounter that we might not expect coming from somebody who claims to be a Christian that, oh, well, Judaism... Buddhism, Islam, they're all worshiping the same thing. We might have to be prepared to deal with that. Or that Jesus was created. We might have to deal with that too. And certainly the scriptures help us in being able to talk to people about these things. All right, that's the devotional for you today. Lord willing, our next daily devotion will be on Monday at 6.30. Hope to see you all then. Thank you, everybody.